Crimson Dragon is an on-rail shooter that revives a cherished series under a new name, fitted with light RPG elements and a dash of asynchronous co-op. These additions bolster the main game, providing depth outside of the core linear gameplay. OnRail's games are heavily automated after all, dictating forward movement for the player, and Crimson Dragon is no different. Unfortunately, due to wildly concocted paths, you often battle against the camera and rarely come out on top. This, coupled with unusually aggressive enemies, make Crimson Dragon a frustrating experience. There's greatness to behold, but you have to fight the will to put down the controller in order to catch a glimpse of these rare, fleeting moments. Plot is not Crimson Dragon's strong suit either, but it suffices in so much as it provides an explanation for your ability and need to command dragons. Humans have only recently begun to colonize planet Draco when the arrival of the crimson scale virus enraged wildlife and laid waste to the settled colonies. Some people, dubbed the Seekers, were immune to the virus. As a Seeker, it's your job to fight back against the rising tide and investigate the cause of the crimson scale outbreak. All levels adhere to a basic structure, consisting of phases that last from one to five minutes apiece. You usually have to defeat swarms of enemies or collect a series of items, only occasionally facing a boss or a strong group of variations on common enemies. For each phase that you complete, you're rewarded based on your performance with credits or items. Regardless of how many enemies you shoot down or items you collect, the most important thing is that you survive. You can better your chances by recruiting other players' dragons from the game's leaderboard, but these wingmen never seem to make much of an impact. You're still the primary target and always smarter than the wingman. It doesn't help that Crimson Dragon is relentless, even on the easiest difficulty setting. Standard enemies fire dozens of projectiles at once, forcing you to constantly barrel roll to avoid impact. Ostensibly, your ability to shoot down enemies and minimize damage relies on elemental relationships. However, though you're given a readout of this balance prior to starting a mission, Choosing the right dragon and assigning the proper abilities rarely makes a meaningful difference in the end. Likewise, you can acquire and raise new dragons, earning them experience as you play, but the evolution of their skills is slow and rarely rewarding. At a certain experience level, dragons may evolve so long as you have the right items in your inventory, but these are mostly cosmetic changes with an ever so slight bump in base stats. The imbalanced relationship between stack growth and difficulty is disappointing but struggling to overcome these odds is nowhere near as frustrating as coping with Crimson Dragon's camera. When you're flying in a simple pattern, it's easy to settle into the camera and flight controls. The left analog stick steers your dragon, and the right stick controls your weapon's aim. Free-flying stages, which allow you to control the speed and trajectory of your dragon, turn the standard control scheme on its head, assigning it to the same stick as movement. It's confusing, not to mention ineffective. You constantly chase targets on screen, but rarely feel in total control. Granted, there are only a few of these free-flying stages in the entire game, but erratic paths in standard levels also prove to be problematic. Quite often you're sent careening around corners, while under fire, without enough time to react. If you submit, you can simply take some damage and move on. If you attempt to kill everything, as you normally would, you're more likely to be unprepared when the camera finally writes itself. Fight your way towards the end of the game and you'll discover stages with greater visual appeal than the initial selection of barren landscapes. But it ultimately feels like too little, too late. For the most part, Crimson Dragon frustrates more than it entertains. Flying your dragon can feel good, but it's only when the game takes a rare breath and slows down that it feels right. The ability to raise dragons is mildly entertaining, but they take forever to evolve into more effective warriors, making this more of a distraction than a rewarding challenge. It doesn't take long to realize that for all its efforts to be something more, Crimson Dragon misses the mark. It's occasionally sloppy, usually frustrating, and ultimately disappointing.